Welcome back to another episode of Homeschool Podcast. We know you have a lot of options out there when it comes to podcasts, so it means the world to us that you're here. I'm your host, Augustino Zoida. Really excited for you guys to hear this episode today because what an interesting, interesting topic that we're talking about today. Uh, I love this type of stuff. I don't do it as much as I'd like to here on Homeschool Podcast, but we should because it's very, very interesting. I find it fascinating. I recently read an article in Newsweek about a New York photographer who spontaneously jumped on a flight, flies to France to explore this abandoned castle. The castle was known to be owned by a victim of the Titanic tragedy. And judging by their photographs and videos that they took, it looked as almost almost as if they up and left, you know, traveling Europe, got on the Titanic, and it looks like no one ever came back since. So very interesting, very eerie is, is the vibe I would get. So first of all, I want to thank my brother-in-law, Aaron. Shout out to Aaron who forwarded me this article. He found it interesting. He thought I would. And he was like, hey, this would be a great topic for you to have on your podcast. But you know what? I did one better. I went and reached out, found the guy who did the exploring, and we have him on our show today. So it's going to be really interesting to hear about his experience, what it was like to be there, if it was as eerie as it looked like it probably was, even from the photographs. We're going to learn about the family that lived there um, <clears throat> and a little bit about what it took to get there and explore and photograph this historic castle. So before the episode begins, I would like to just give a big thank you to everybody who came out to see me in Dallas, Texas this last weekend. I had a great time. Six amazing shows. I was there Thursday through Sunday. I had a lot of fun with everybody. Some people who you know knew me, been listening to the show for years or supporting me as a stand-up comedian for years, finally got to meet them. They finally got to see me live. What a great time. And, and I met a lot of people that you know just heard of me for the first time, came out to the show, and you know, really enjoyed it. I got to meet people. So if you guys were at the show, thank you. It was a pleasure to meet you and talk to some of you after the show. And I, I think I got some new friends there and I'd love to go back. What a cool town in uh, in Plano, Texas at the House of Comedy. I had a great time. If you guys want to see me perform live, I got some dates for you. You can see me this weekend in San Francisco, California. I'm doing the Cobbs Comedy Club. It's August 5th and 6th. So two shows Friday two shows Saturday. So there you go. You got four opportunities to see me. If you're in the San Francisco area, I'd love to see you. Uh, the early shows, it's me and Sam Tripoli of the Tinfoil Hat Podcast, it's, which is just a great stand-up comedy show. And then the late shows, it's Tinfoil Hat Live. So if you're into conspiracies or you're a fan of the Tinfoil Hat Podcast and Sam Tripoli, you can see him, myself, Eddie Bravo, uh, the co-host of the Tinfoil Hat Podcast, Xavier Guerrero, all of us are on the, you can stick around, buy tickets for the late show, uh, talking some crazy conspiracies. That should be a lot of fun. So that's San Francisco. Come out August 5th and 6th. And then after that, I'm headed to Little Rock, Arkansas, August 31st through September 4th. I'm at the Looney Bin Comedy Club in Little Rock, Arkansas. And I hope to see you guys there. Then after that, I head over to Nebraska. It's September 15th and 16th. So that Thursday, I will be performing in Omaha. And then that Friday, I will be performing in Lincoln, Nebraska. So uh, you got two chances to see me there. And then after that, I head to Massachusetts, October 7th and October 8th. The 7th, which is a Friday. You can see me in Worcester, Massachusetts. And then super excited for this one, October 8th. You can see me in Foxborough, Massachusetts. I'm actually performing in Foxborough, a.k.a. Gillette Stadium. I am performing in Gillette Stadium. If you know anything about me, I'm a giant fan of the Patriots. So this is super, super cool. And then the next day, Sunday, we're going to go watch the Patriots crush the Lions. So I'm looking forward to that one. Guys, these dates and everything else can be found at homeschooledpod.com. You can get tickets, everything. It's at homeschooledpod.com. Click on tour. Now, without further ado, here's the episode. I hope you enjoy. Please take your seats. School is now in session. Welcome to Homeschooled Podcast. Homeschooled. 
the homeschool podcast. Why? Because it was homeschool. It's time to document the journey. Rami, welcome to the homeschool podcast. It's nice to have you on. Um, Thank you. Man, uh, this is going to be really interesting to talk about. I want to talk about your recent experience. You went to France. You just you just spontaneously up and left. I love it. And uh, before we kind of get into that, I want to let's let's let let's let people get to know you a little bit. Your name is Rami Awad, and yes, uh, you're a New Yorker, correct? Yeah. Yep. Born and raised in New York. Yep. Born and raised in New York. Oh, okay, cool. And then uh, you are a photographer. Is that correct? Yeah, I am a photographer. I just started, you know, getting into video. So I've been doing video for like, you know, the past two years. Okay. So I'm kind of like new to video, but I've I've been doing photography for, for close to 10 years now. Yeah. Wow. And do you normally do a lot of, I mean, well, to be honest with you, I looked at some of the stuff that you did. Uh, obviously, you're very talented. You have some really dope Thank photographs you. of people, really cool pictures of like, you know, uh, you. historic buildings and stuff. I've seen a lot. You're, you're very good. And then I saw some of the videos that you were. Yeah, man, of course. I mean, I just, I applaud you. I applaud anybody. I'm a stand up comedian. I applaud anybody that's a spontaneous and then just takes their talents in their own hands. No one's going to hand you anything. You just go. And I, I love that you were super interested in something and you're like, I, I just got to go. So, um, so let's get into yeah. it. How did, you, uh, how did you hear about this castle? Um, I heard about it from, so the Urbex community right now is very like, uh, it's very popular. It's very, it's booming right now. Uh, you know, a lot of people are going out and exploring these abandoned buildings. Um, so I actually got the location. It's a very low key uh, location. Not a lot of people know about it, but I actually got the location from like a mutual explorer. Okay. Yeah. Did they tell they went they went to before you did? Uh, they did go before us. Yes. Wow. And so apparently, I don't want to give too much information, but this location was literally undoable. For really? many years, yeah, it's literally it was undoable. It there, it was watched heavily. Uh, uh, there was there's cameras, active cameras everywhere. Um, there's like an organization that's like trying to like take ownership of it. Mm -hmm. It's like something weird, like with like French law or something. So like it was like kind of undoable for like many years. So when I heard of the opportunity. I jumped on it. Yeah. Like I, I, I literally like booked my ticket like two days, like two days before. Two days before you left. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, 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 uh, so why, what do you think changed? Like why, like you said it, it was undoable before and, and then you were able to do it. So do you think the cameras went away? Like what changed? I, 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 I think so. I think it's the cameras. Because we were outside, you know, like filming on the outside mm -hmm. and right in front of the cameras. And, you know, like nothing really happens. No one said so I think what changed was maybe people are not really like something happened, maybe. And then people are not really watching it anymore. Something like that. I mean, but, it's a huge piece of property that's just sitting there. And, <laughs> yeah, and it's, you know, it's, it, does it technically have an owner? Does does the city own it right now. I think this organization officially owns it. Okay. There's an organization right now that officially owns it. Like last time I, I checked. I wonder if there's plans to make it a museum at some point or restore it uh, or something like that. That Maybe that's the reason. Yeah, it could be. It could be, honestly. It, I mean, it's a beautiful piece of history. Like I got goosebumps going through the place. Like, and it's, it's, it's like extraordinary. Like, like they have like, like staircases for the servants. They have like a whole section just for the servants. Yeah. Um. Like, like there was a chapel in there that I didn't even include in like the video. You know, like a private chapel. I read so that. Like, yeah. Yeah. It was just like mind blowing. So you were saying that there so were like, I was, easily uh, uh, twenty rooms. Oh, easily. Twenty more people. probably. I saw some I of the uh, pictures. I mean, obviously the state is a lot of stuff is worn out. The 
wallpaper is really worn out. Did you come across any bathrooms? I did. I did come across bathrooms. Um, I just didn't find them interesting enough to film. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really like film no. any. Yeah. <laughs> but what I found weird was like, there wasn't many bathrooms, which was very odd. For, like for now that you're bedroom. mentioning it. <laughs> Yeah, now that you're mentioning it, it's like I, I don't really like remember what the bathroom even looks like. Wow, I wonder if like it's I wonder if there was even some on it. Okay, so was there any? There's the castle. Was there anything else on the property? Where is there back houses or maybe where the? Oh uh, no, no, there wasn't. No one stayed in the castle. Yeah, I think yeah, everybody stayed in the castle, but the property was humongous. Mm -hmm. Like, just getting inside, like, was a mission. You know what I mean? Like, we had to, like, park basically on the highway and go behind the castle. Like, like we had to, like, hike through woods in the rain. Like, it was it was nuts. Like It was raining? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was raining hard. Yeah, it was raining. It was, like, muddy. It, for me, it was fun. You know what I mean? Like, I, I like that kind of stuff, so. It just added on to like the adrenaline, the, the adventure. So, yeah, I'm with you. I think that would have been fun. <laughs> I think that would have been fun too. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it, it's tough to use the word like fun or cool or neat just because of the, you know, the sad history behind it. But it is all those things. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, it, it's, yeah. it really is interesting. It's neat. I love stuff like that. And so you parked on the road. How long of a hike until you reached the castle, would you say? I would say it was a close to 30 minutes. 30 minutes? So maybe yeah, uh, close to 30, like 20 to 30 minutes, I would say. Nothing is like trimmed down. Like you're literally going through like heavy like vegetation. Like, and then there's some plants with like thorns that yeah. just like literally like go through your jeans. So nothing yeah. was uh, kept obviously in the house. So, uh, so the same thing with the surrounding uh, landscaping, you know, nobody was up to because I imagine back then, it's just this castle on, and on this big land, but there must have been a road to drive to it, you know. Um, there, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not there anymore. Yeah, yeah. There was actually the castle's fenced, like so. Like there was a road, the main road, but we decided not to go through there because they literally have cameras in the front and everything. Um, like we decided that if we wanted to do it, and if these cameras were operational, we're at least gonna avoid the ones in the front. So they don't catch us on the way in. Right. Yeah. So you wouldn't be able to get through. You got cameras. At least we can just do that. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. So you kind yeah. of, that's why you went from the back of it through the woods. Exactly. <laughs> and you weren't alone. You were with. So it's kind of like. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I was with um, an explorer named Big Banks. Okay. Yeah. Urbex, like urbexing, which is like urban exploring, basically. But like in short, you, you want to take as little people as possible. If. You know, it's good to have one other person or maybe a third, but anything after that, it's like you're really risking it. So for what other reasons would you say that's a risk? I, I would imagine from what I was reading, it was very unsafe. You know, when you're when you're exploring these old buildings, like they said, it could collapse. The ground can give out in the bottom of you. So like, yeah, probably the less amount of people, the better. Is that the reason? Um, yeah, that is the reason also. So, um, but the main reason is just not getting caught because, mm -hmm. uh, these places are trespassing. Like, yeah. Uh, like, um, even though like, it's, it's like an unwritten, like, it's kind of like not trespassing, but like you would still get in trouble. You know what I mean? Right. So, like the more people, like the more chances of you getting caught kind of thing. So it's falling into this weird, I think loophole or something, because technically it's trespassing, but like. If it's, it was honestly, yeah, anyone had that much control over it, I feel like it would have been something by now. You know? Exactly, it, it you was, get it, you get it, right? And and yeah. it's probably like a lot of permits and a lot of stuff that mm -hmm. they have to do, with to do anything with it, whether they want to tear it down, restore it, sell it, make it a museum. Absolutely. If anything, I would it hope is. that it would be a museum. Yeah, that would be nice, you know, like something with the history, but then like um yeah i mean that would be nice i feel like but you think people yeah people would go there because of the the history of it you know so I, I mean the 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 titanic wreckage is one of the most famous tragedies in history true you know, 
I think that it would have such a huge fan base that people would are so interested and fascinated by it that I think it would be an attraction. Absolutely, yeah. And I really hope they make it like to something like that. That would be like that yeah. would be sweet. Honestly. Then you can go back through the front door. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you'll be welcomed in. <laughs> you buy a ticket, and they're like, "Hey, isn't this you on this?" <laughs> on this uh, video footage we have. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> um, so are, are, are they officially calling it the, the Ostby house? Is that what it's, is, do you think that's how it's pronounced? I was, I was calling it Ostby. That's like the family's last name. Yes, I believe. Yeah, yeah. That's what everybody's calling it right now. The previous owner is, and the most recent owner, right? It's supposed to be Inglehart, Cornelius, Ostby, and he's a jeweler. Uh, he's he's Norwegian, but he he lived there in this castle. Obviously, it seemed like a lot of servants. He had, uh, from what I could read, he had five kids, four boys, the youngest daughter, and it was himself. I guess the wife passed away several years back, but it was himself, yeah, and his youngest daughter that were actually yeah. aboard the Titanic. From what I read, it yeah. was just him and his daughter, and then they had met up with another couple who. Yes. They had while traveling, they recently met and then they were all friends and everything. Um, yeah, so a little bit about what what I read about uh, the Otsby's is and, and the actual story with the, with the Titanic. It, it seemed that they were all over, they were you know traveling Egypt, everywhere. He was obviously working, traveling, jeweler, and it's but they boarded from Europe, they boarded the Titanic from Europe still. So they, yes. you know, I don't know if they were coming from home or, or what the deal was. So um, from their experience, these are obviously, and you know, he was a wealthy jeweler by the castle and the amount of rooms. You can tell that he was extremely wealthy. Um, definitely. Definitely stayed in the, the higher end of first class on the ship. And yes. from what, Helen is his youngest daughter from what she described in interviews when I was reading about it is the way that she described it is not as much panic as you would think because they were one of the early on quarters that were notified, Hey, get to the upper deck. So mm. they, the, because they're in first class. So everyone in first class had first advantage of survival. Which is, okay. you know, you watch the movie Titanic, they kind of touch on that, you know, that the middle class or the lower class that were just staying in bunks and things like that. They, they were they were told last and also seated on life both last and most of them lost their lives. And so from what Helen's description was that she that, you know, she heard the thud and she felt it and she said that she got up and put some clothes on and she at the time she's maybe 16 year old girl and she wasn't wow. staying in the same room with her dad that's how wealthy these people are <laughs> these she had <laughs> that's two, yeah they had two <laughs> two luxurious rooms and you know she had her own <laughs> so she gets she gets, she says she says she actually thinks to herself even though she had no idea what the thud was and the noise was she thought to herself what if i'm going to be in the water i don't want to wear a lot of heavy clothes and so she didn't yeah. have so much clothes on. And then she goes out and she sees her father. And she said it was a her father's like, you know, talking with the other people in their area about what was that. And then some staff comes and says, oh, don't worry. Everything's OK. And they said about an hour went by before the next staff came by and said, everybody put on your life jackets and get to the top. So an hour of them just casually talking. Hey, you know, what was that sound? Like, no, no panic. But... And then when they said, put your life jacket what? on, they felt like it was a, you know, just a precaution. They were told as a precaution, yeah. put your life jackets on. And, you know, they had never even thought to try on their life jacket. So it was very awkward. They didn't know how to put it on. They said the staff was very accommodating, helping everybody very casually and calmly put their life jackets on. Uh -huh. So they make it to the top, her, her father and the, and the other couple who they had friends, they were friends with. They're all mm -hmm. on the top and they were. Seating everybody on the lifeboat, as you probably know, women and children first. And they only heard, hold maybe, I think, 12, 14 people on the lifeboats. So you've got. That's a little amount. Very little amount. There was yeah. nowhere near enough lifeboats on this ship oh, to accommodate no. everybody. And they certainly did not. Um, I think that you have like one captain 
or, or excuse me, they were probably referring to him as officer. And then two other guys that were actually had to lower you down. Oh my good. They didn't even have like a mechanism for it, like a machine. No. So at the top, there's one guy on each side lowering you. So it, so it's going like this. And then like Did it this. jam or that's just how it was? I think back then that's how it was. Wow. So back then there was no mechanism to, you know, a machine that would probably evenly lower you down. It was hand by hand. So two men are just like, you know, and it's very uneven. That's going like that. Crazy. Yes. And it's in, and it's dark in the middle of the ocean. And so they're letting, you know, so you have the first officer, um, all women. And then at the end of each lifeboat, they would go, okay, two men can jump on board. This gentleman, uh, what's his name? Is it Inglehart? I guess you pronounce it. Cornel yeah. Otsby, who owned the castle that you went to. He says to his daughter, because the the <laughs> the wealthy are not being really seeing the panic. Yeah. Houses. They were brought to the ship before anyone else. The, before the panic. So he says to himself, and they're still like way above water. It hasn't even really begun to sink yet that much. Yeah. He calmly says, We're all gonna be cold out on these lifeboats. Oh my god, wait. Let what? me run back to my room. And let's get some coats for us. Wait, I don't mean to laugh, but it's just like. Yeah, that's how. What? This is his reaction. Just, wow. So he it's left. Mind blowing. Coats for him and his daughter and his daughter, Helen. Yeah. They're like, you cannot wait. You have. If you get a lifeboat, take it. So this little wow. girl gets on the lifeboat with the woman who is her father's friend. The husband not allowed to get on yet because women and children first. So she went on with her. And she says that was the last time she ever saw her father. His body was later found. Oh, my God. Yeah, he did not survive. Wow. So I don't know what happened between. And by the way, uh, researching this, there was a couple of articles that said, because apparently this castle you went to at the time, this is a very famous family in town. Very famous family because of all their wealth. So there were articles in the local newspaper to the town you went to that said the Otsby family survived, like letting everyone be. Oh, thank God. We're glad that they're OK. Oh, but it, was why. it wasn't till like two days later that they found his body. It was identified by one of his employees. Oh, my goodness. And that his is went home with the friend. But I don't know what happened in that time of the daughter. You know, her father's dead. She has some brothers, but they live all over the world. And does yeah. she ever go back to that castle is what I want to know. Because it kind of looks like from your pictures That's now. That's a good question. Maybe. You were there. You tell me. It seemed like they up and left to go on travel. And no one has been back since. Mm -hmm. So that yeah. seemed like that's why the city or this organization that's been trying to get a hold of it for so long that technically owes it probably has such difficulty doing anything with it because of the state it was left in. Now, I also kind of read that he did have a will and left yeah. all his money to his kids and everything. And she actually did go on to continue his jewelry business with her brother as an adult woman. Wow. She was very successful. Um, wow. So why is the house still left that way? I wonder. Wow, I mean, yeah, I have the same question. It's like it's 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 nuts that they was something like that. Yeah, a band, but believe that it was sold. Yeah, it must have been sold in some sort of estate sale or something. Um, you know, and and the, you know, the kids did own it, but it's just kind of eerie to think about that. You know, did they ever go back? Why was it left like that as is, fully furnished? Mm. And was it too difficult for them to go back, for her to go back? I don't, I mean, who knows the real story? That story you just told me, oh, it's, 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 it's crazy. You know, like him going back for the jacket. Right. It, you know, because he, he kind of like misunderestimated the situation a little bit. Like he kind of thought it would be like routine, you know, just like we're going to get out, you know? Yeah. They thought they're taking these lifeboats to ferry over to another ship that they were told was going to be waiting for them. And there wasn't. There wasn't until maybe 
four or five o'clock in the morning was there another ship that came, you know, for the, for the survivors. Wow. So you were there. The article kind of describes the feeling that you felt there. I would imagine it would be very eerie. Honestly, like I know it sounds like really cliche, but I felt like the place was like haunted. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like honestly, I wouldn't be surprised that like, you get um, that feeling from I heard it. Like weird. Yeah, like I heard like I heard like church bells at one point. Like like it was very like faint. Like I heard church bells. Like I heard like 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 weird like like a pantry closing at one point you know i don't know like the people who were with me heard it too so you know but like i, I don't know i just feel I personally just like it was haunted. Haunted. <laughs> i don't know that place it's is not haunted stuff, so. like i just you can't help but think when you're in there how eerie this must be and you know i, I mean i went to a museum once that has a piece of the titanic just a piece of the ship on display yeah and even being around that, I felt eerie. So I can't imagine. Yeah. Yeah. And in there, there was like like a few dead birds, like mm -hmm. small birds. It really did sell. You know, the kids maybe sold the property and maybe maybe the family moved in and it was just haunted and they just got out of there and never went back. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we don't really know. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think they would even report it. I did this little adventure. Nowhere near that I have to travel as far as you did. Or, or was it as illegal? But although it was illegal, um, <laughs> I don't know if you're familiar with Spawn Ranch, which is where the Manson family used to hang out. It's out here in oh. California. And it's like in San Fernando. Oh my God. Yeah, they used to film Westerns there, like famous Western TV shows and movies were filmed. There was a movie set. It's called wow. Spawn Ranch. And George Spawn, the guy who owned it, eventually lost the business. They didn't film things there anymore. And he became blind and poor. And he let the Manson family stay there. And yeah. Uh, so it ended up and uh, if if you've ever seen this famous photo of the Manson family in Time magazine, it's a famous photo of them under this rock. And so a friend of mine once decided that we were gonna we were determined to go find that rock. That's where they uh -huh. used to hang out and stuff. And so the ranch is no longer there. It is now like on the side of a freeway. It's just wilderness. So there's nothing there. Uh -huh. There's no property left. But we climbed down wow. the side of the freeway at night. Um, definitely not allowed to be down there. It took us a couple of hours to walk through the wilderness and just find this rock where they took that famous photo. And oh, you wow. You're getting close because you started to find abandoned cars and you, we would see like handprints on the wall, like oh they, like, wow! Um, and you know, uh, once we got to the rock, there was like carved like you know Charlie, you know Charles Manson, and stuff like that. All of them. That's screen. crazy. Very eerie. Also, very eerie. <laughs> wow, that's not. I, you're making me want to go there. It's it's maybe shoot a TikTok over there. Yes. Yeah, uh, yeah man. Uh, I mean, it's a lot. You, you probably would jump on a plane, come out here, <laughs> check out Spawn Rants. Yeah, yeah. My, my favorite hospital is actually in California that I've ever explored. A hospital? Yeah. There's an abandoned hospital in California that's like really? amazing. And what's it? It has like, a, it's in Los Angeles. Oh, in Los Angeles, really? Oh, I'll have yeah, to it's in Los Angeles. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's really it's crazy, and it has like power and everything. <laughs> that's yeah. We have we have some cool things like that out here. We have an abandoned yeah. zoo. Oh wow, that's not a big wow. deal. Like that one is just open to the public to go hike there. I mean, as sad as a lot of these these tragic stories are, certain things have always fascinated me, and one of them is the the, the Manson murders. I mean, Titanic is a big one, man. So I, I especially was very interested in in this story that you did and this exploring that you did, I wasn't planning on bringing this up, but you seem like a cool guy. Uh, <laughs> mm. I'll just tell you a, a quick story really quick. I think I, I like to dabble into some of the conspiracies. Okay. I like Han and stuff. Okay. I like old stuff like that. Conspiracies, things like that. I got, I got uh, my minute warning here that zoom is going to kick us off. So we're wrapping up anyway. All right. Okay, cool. I've heard several conspiracies. I'll give you the short version about the titanic which i find fascinating if you get a chance just go look at the, these stories crazy and I, I gotta hear this because yeah. i've never heard a conspiracy around the titanic so. really i've no. heard two and one of them uh let me tell you this one this one is like the more you look into this 
the more you will find these are facts. Okay. Oh. So there were two oh, wow. ships. There, there were two ships. There was the Titanic. Okay. I've heard of that. Yes. You've heard this one, right? And the other I, one was I called know. the Olympic. Okay. So yeah. you, you know this theory, though? I don't know the theory, but a lot of people were commenting on my TikTok mm-hmm. saying that Wikipedia is lying, that the internet is lying, that something to do with Olympia, but I didn't really look it up. Okay. So, yes. So the Titanic and the Olympic. Now, um, big organization buys these two ships, these luxury ships for, for travel. And when they bought them, he had them delivered. When they had them delivered, there was an accident. There was an accident on, I think, uh, let me think about this for a second. Not the Titan, not the Titanic. There was an accident on the Olympic. It crashed and there was damage to the bottom. He did not have insurance yet. This literally, he did not buy insurance on the ships. This happened right. during transportation. And so I forget the amount of what the ships are worth of what he paid for them. So he would have lost a lot of money. The theory is, is that he switched names. He put the Titanic logo on the Olympic and he put the Olympic logo on the Titanic. So the ship that actually set sail was the damaged ship after he, because, because the Olympic is sitting there as damaged what? and then he was not able to insure it, but the Titanic was insurable because it was not damaged. <laughs> What? He probably switched name tags, <laughs> now called that one the Titanic, and insured it. Let it absolutely. Set so there's more. Not only did he do this, knowing that you know hundreds and hundreds of people were going to die tragically, and he would get his money back for his ship, but he also used it even more to his advantage because this person that we're talking about that did this, by the way. Is J.P. Morgan of as now as you know as J.P. Morgan Chase, who's heavily involved with all the banking back then, and he, there was something that he really wanted to do with with the banking, and he was supposed to be meeting the following week, I believe, with all of the other bankers about they were going to vote to not do what he wanted to do, and they all were on the ship. He invited really? them all on the ship. Last what? minute. This is all facts. You can look this up. Last minute, he says, you know what, guys? I'm sick. I can't make the cruise. And lets all his friends, not to mention the wealthiest, wealthiest people are aboard this ship. With yeah. all their belongings, jewelry, everything on this ship all sank to the bottom of the ocean. I mean, if you think about it, it has a lot of merit to it to be a true story. It's crazy. Absolutely. It actually sounds like something that would be true, too. Absolutely. Like, Absolutely. I'm, I'm literally going to jump online and look this up after we're done. Like and Everything this is, you wanted this to is do coming. with that bank got done because they weren't all there to, to vote on it. Yeah. And that's why, he, you know, you have J.P. Morgan Chase today and J.P. Morgan owned everything that he did. You know, he's a very rich, <laughs> wealthy man. Yeah. Um, and then the other theory, this one also may be true. I don't think it could, it, it doesn't make the other one untrue. This one's just more of like a, a ghost story, if you will, if you appreciate that. Right. Sort of thing. Um, there is a famous statue that was stolen and there was a curse on it. So if you steal the statue from this place, it is cursed. And everybody uh-huh. who had it had something tragic happen to them. And then, they, so they got rid of it. And so it kept changing hands and then somebody else bought it. But it is said that while it was being delivered to the new person, it was being delivered aboard the Titanic, this cursed statue. Oh, wow. So I don't know how true yeah. that is. If you believe in curses, if you believe in ghosts or spirits, things I like definitely do. <laughs> I do. That's, uh, that's an interesting one. So yeah, you can go look up this this famous cursed statue that was aboard the Titanic, which people blame for it crashing and hitting that iceberg. But I believe the first story was already damaged. Yeah, I believe that too. Evil people in the world, they will do absolutely anything, whether it means you know hundreds yeah. of people, you know suffering to their yeah, death. absolutely yeah, that's true. Come on, you call in sick. 
<laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. But yeah, man, um, I'll let you go. Rami, it was an absolute Perfect. pleasure. And I really want to thank you for coming on and sharing your experience with me. I thought it was fascinating. So it was, I just had to reach out. I thought it was really cool. Uh, appreciate you that. Trying to come on. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you uh, for having me. Everybody go follow him. He's a great photographer. He's, he's, you know, he does video now as well. And there's some really beautiful pieces that I've seen, including this castle. So, uh, your Instagram is pit my camel, which is hilarious by the way. <laughs> yeah. the, what was the Twitter called again? Remind me. Uh, no. my TikTok. TikTok. Yeah. TikTok. Mm -hmm. It's uh, yo, it's yo, it's Rami. Yo, it's Rami. So if you can go there, you yeah. can see all this footage that we're talking yeah. about. I was going to ask you one other thing. Do you have any photographs or footage or anything of hiking through there while it rained and stuff? Um, like that? Um, I should. Yes, I should I'd have some. Yeah, I'd be curious to see that too. So if you feel like posting it, let me know when you do. Or oh, definitely, definitely, definitely. If you I feel will. like if, if it's all right for me to use any photos or anything when I post this podcast up on YouTube, just so we can cut to and give. Oh, people, okay. Um, if that's okay with you, I'll I'll do that and then we'll have people make sure they go check out your TikTok and Instagram as well to see it. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. All awesome. Right. Perfect. Guys, go follow him. It's super interesting and keep doing what you're doing, man. I love Thank it. Thank you. I really appreciate that. You too. No problem. Okay, everybody. That was the episode with Rami Awad. I hope you really enjoyed it. I thought it was fascinating. That stuff just really interesting, man. And I hope that you guys found it interesting too. And uh, that's it, everybody. I have a fantastic week. Thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe if you like this podcast, if you were checking us out for the first time. And uh, if you're new or even if you're not new to the Homeschool Podcast, please do me a personal favor. Head on over to YouTube and hit subscribe. That's where I need the uh, the most love over there, okay? So if you, a lot of people listen to podcasts while they're driving and stuff. And so, you know, I do pretty okay there. But in terms of like YouTube, my numbers are a little low. I got to get some subscribers over on YouTube. And it'd be nice to have a face go along with the voice. All right, you guys. So especially for this episode, because I'm going to try to incorporate some, some cool pictures that Rami took from the experience. So hope you guys enjoy it. Go follow him on, uh, if you're if you're on TikTok or if you're on Instagram, he was at Pimp My Camel. You can uh, also follow me on Instagram at Augustino Zoida. Across the board, Instagram, Twitter, it's at Augustino Zoida. I do have a TikTok, which I occasionally post stand-up videos and comedy roasts, which I do the Friday roast. And that is Augustino Comedian is my handle on TikTok. But besides that, you guys, just follow me across the board. Whatever you use the most, I can really appreciate the love and support. Half the time I'm getting shadow banned because of the stuff that I shed light on. As you can see, we shed some light on some stuff that people try to sweep under the rug. But that's what I love to do. And I love having you guys be a part of it. So please continue to come back here and support the Homeschool Podcast where we talk about all kinds of stuff. Fascinating stuff like this. Conspiracies. A lot of comedian guests. Um, you know a lot of help with and advice for up and coming standups, sharing ex experiences of life performers and their uh, rise and falls and peaks and valleys. So that's just some of what we cover here at the homeschool, co homeschool podcast. Make sure you guys subscribe. I'm Augustino Zoida. Don't forget that only love can save the world. I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Homeschool podcast. Homeschool. The homeschool podcast. Why? Because it was homeschool. I don't want to do that. <laughs> no, okay. I don't want to do that at all. <laughs> <laughs>